you guys, it's day number 114 of my 365 day Jimmy Ice Bath Challenge here in 2022. If you've been following along, you know I have been at it every single day getting into a very, very cold ice bath. There it is. Lots and lots of ice in there today, you guys. Let's take a peek at the temperature. Looks like 32.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So very, very cold as always. So welcome, come on in. Make yourselves at home. I've hope, I hope you've had a wonderful weekend so far. It is a big, bright, beautiful, sunshiny day here in South Carolina. And uh, I'm getting in an ice bath. It's really nice. I, um, I went out to a small town about 15 minutes from here called Inman, South Carolina. They had like a little festival on Sunday. And so I went out there, got a little bit of sunshine, so a little, little sunburn from that. But um, I want to talk about something today that a lot of you have brought up, that when you see me get out of the ice bath, you notice something that happens, and it's very perceptive because it's true. So what happens is you get red when you get in an ice bath. I want to talk about what that is, why it's not dangerous, and why it's actually a, a sign of something good happening. So let's set you down. And as always, when we're done inside the bath inside the ice, um, I will take you around my property and we will jibber jabber after the ice bath. So five minutes on the clock, you guys, and here we go. This thing has been pumping out the ice lately, guys. I mean, it's a, it's a ton of ice. There's a big chunk under my butt. <laughs> Get out! Shut up, dog. Hey, you yappy dog over there. All right, today, you guys, I want to address a topic that maybe you notice when you've done cold showers or you've noticed watching me on these ice bath videos that when you get out of the ice bath, and I'm going to lift my hands because they're hurting really bad for some reason now. Um, when you get out of the ice bath, a lot of you guys have noticed how red that I am when I get out. Uh, and I can really see it like on my belly and such. And people are like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. That must be inflammation. And you would be wrong. So the body is very sophisticated. The body knows when you're giving it a stimuli like cold that it has to respond as a means of protecting you. And one of the things that it does is it rushes blood to your skin. And so usually the blood can stay, you know, within the body and, and take care of all the issues internally because externally your body's pretty much room temperature almost all the time. People don't really get really hot and they don't get really cold usually. So it doesn't usually rush to the skin. And so when you get into a sauna, you might notice you get red as well. Same issue. 
um, your body actually rushes blood there to help uh, with the cooling down process, helps to produce sweat and all that stuff. But in an ice bath, the blood rushing to the skin actually serves the opposite. It's like, all right, let's run some uh, circulation to the surface level of the skin and that redness is the result. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it's just the body doing what the body does. And so one of the benefits that an ice bath gives you is it actually improves your circulation. So those of you that have circulation issues, a cold shower might be something that could help you along those lines. And so I just thought that was really fascinating because everybody's always like, oh wow, you're so red. Why are you red? Because people interpret the red being something harmful like inflammation. And it's not really the inflammatory response that's doing that. So thought you would like to know about that. Where are we at here? 40 seconds left. So yeah, you guys, hope you guys have enjoyed your weekend. I have been chilling out pretty well, <laughs> all pun intended, in, a, in an ice bath. I'm chilling out, uh, but just relaxing this weekend, uh, doing, you know, minor stuff in my work, but chilling out is the rule of the day. All right, let me go into the water. if I scared that dog with my scream. <laughs> Am I still getting the high temperatures? Bulletproof wants to know. Yes, you asked that almost almost every ice bath video. Um, I stopped talking about it because it was just so consistent, Bulletproof. Uh, but yes, I am still getting the anticipatory thermogenesis. Uh, those of you who are brand new to my ice bath videos, about six weeks after I started doing these ice baths, I noticed I would feel hot about an hour before getting into the ice bath. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. Why am I suddenly feeling feverish and hot? And to the point that my eyes would burn. And so I started taking my body temperature with a thermometer. First time I checked it, 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I saw a bunch of 99.9 .9 degrees. The highest I got was 100.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Not sick, but having a reaction body temperature wise that was kind of a anticipation of getting in the cold. So yes, that is still happening. I guess it's just always gonna happen as long as I do the cold on a regular basis, bulletproof. So yeah, it's still happening. Kind of an interesting thing. But it's not uh, the redness on my skin because of any kind of harm. I think sometimes think uh, people see red and they just assume, oh, wow, you're getting harmed. Oh, wow, you're inflamed. And not in this context. So going back to my topic in the ice bath, you, you get greater circulation doing this. And I think that's something that's devalued with ice baths. Because people think, oh, wow, your blood circulation must slow down being cold. It's actually the opposite. You see a speeding up of the circulation. All right, let's see who else here. Thank you guys for being here on this beautiful Sunday here in South Kakalaki. Lachey is here. Jeremy is here. Sharon, Marcus, Carnivore Runner, Candy, Bulletproof. Sharon says, bam, 114 with fire emojis. Yes, 114. Tomas is here. Bulletproof says, go, Jimmy114. Mudge is here. Don Marie, Gary, Heidi, Angela, Gillis, Rice Allett. Marcus gave me lots of fire emojis. Thank you for that, Marcus. When I'm in that ice, some days it's okay. Some days I struggle. Today I slightly struggled. Today it was a lot of ice in there. So <laughs> I need to... Uh, I need to let some of that ice in there melt back a little bit because it's a little hard to get in. It's so much ice. I'm literally having to like 
wedge my body underneath all that ice. But that's all right. Carmelina is here. Alisa is here. Jeremy says, do you know the ideal time for getting in an ice bath? Great question. I have addressed this before, but I'm always happy to address new uh, questions again. There is no such thing, Jeremy, as an ideal time. What I have found is work it into the schedule that works best for you. So let me tell you about my friend Mike Mutzel. So he also has the Morosco Forge. Mike's routine is this. When he wakes up in the morning, he does one minute in the Morosco Forge as a way of waking himself up. And then right before bedtime, Mike again does one minute in the ice bath. I'm sure he does some longer sessions, but his regular practice is a couple of sessions, you know, one or two minute sessions in the ice bath, one in the morning, one in the evening. Um, Jimmy chooses five minutes at around five o'clock every day because I go to bed pretty early. So like 7.30, 8 o'clock, I'm in bed. And so I use it as a tool for better sleep. So for me, I found that when I get in a nice bath, I get sleepy uh, within two to three hours after being in there. So I use it strategically to help with my sleep, help me rest better. And the way that works is it lowers your core body temperature. So for Jimmy, in the afternoon is better. Now, does that mean I never do it at other times of the day? Oh yeah, I, I do it. I, I, I do what's called microdosing, and I need to do a whole episode of my ice bath on microdosing. But I did this the other day, yesterday actually, when I had mowing left to do, I decided to microdose one minute of an ice bath. Just pop my body in there real fast, one minute, dunk my whole head under, and, uh, and then went and did some yard work. And that was a means to keep me from getting hot. And so I think it's just wherever you can fit it in your schedule. I think the easiest way for a lot of people to incorporate it, if you're just learning cold therapy and you're going to do cold showers, is at the end of your hot shower, just turn it down to the most tolerable, not comfortable, but tolerable level of coolness at the end. And then just breathe your way through it, hopefully at least 30 seconds, ideally two to three minutes, and just see how you do and work your way from there. I also know people, I've seen Sean Baker uh, do this on his page. He'll go into the shower uh, about 15 to 20 minutes before bedtime for the same reason that I do my ice bath so close to bed um, to help him lower his core body temperature. I think we devalue the importance for sleep of getting your core body temperature to fall. And one of the best ways to do that is to get into at least a cold shower. And if you have the ability to get into an ice bath, get into an ice bath. So no ideal time, just figure it out for yourself. Um, and the only way you can do that is just do it, just start. The problem is most of you guys watching my videos, you ain't done nothing yet. You slackers. It's day 114 and some of you have yet to even put your body in any kind of cold at all. I am offended if that's you. Just kidding. Hey, you do what's right for you. What you feel like is best for you. But I'm doing this for me and I'm enjoying all the benefits and reaping all the benefits from it. And I just want the same for you guys. That's all. That's all. Uh, Candy said, would love to learn more about the temperature increase in the future. Yeah, I did a whole episode just on that. Um, and I, I made a reel out of that particular episode uh, that I'll be posting very soon. But in short, uh, when I started this challenge, Candy, at the beginning of the year, January 1st, I didn't have any idea how I was going to respond. And I was doing it daily, obviously, five minutes a day, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And about week six, I started noticing I was getting hot and I was having a warmth over my body right at about an hour prior to getting in the ice bath. So around 4 p.m., I would notice my eyes would start burning like I had a fever. I would feel kind of flush. And I was thinking, oh no, am I getting sick? And so I 
put the thermometer in my mouth and started getting these readings. And I started doing it every single day for like a week. And every day, my the lowest temperature I got was 99.3. And the highest I got was 100.6. And I remember reaching out to a few ice bath people, a few cold therapy people and like, you ever seen this before? You ever heard of it? And they said it's super uncommon, but it is possible that your brain is convincing you to warm itself up as a premeditated, as an anticipation of the cold. And so lucky me, I get that, I get that response. And, and I've loved it. I mean, it's been kind of interesting to watch that. Um, and we have so much control over that kind of thing with our minds. And I'm not consciously going, ooh, I need to warm up. No, I'm not doing anything like that. But it's just happening. Um, and then I get into the ice bath with that fever. And I'm not sick, by the way. Through all that, I never have been sick. It's just the temperature makes it look like it. Um, I get into the ice bath. And it's all I can do. Uh, I, I need that because I'm so hot. I need that to cool down. When I'm in the ice bath and my head is sticking up out of it. I'm dying to put my head under the water because even today I noticed it. I was quite feverish across my forehead and my eyes started to burn. It was almost as if the intensity of that fever response of that anticipatory, anticipatory thermogenesis intensifies when I'm in the water. How, how weird is that? You would think the body would be getting cooler and the body is getting cooler. But from the brain perspective, it was responding to me of, dude, dunk your head. Which is why you guys see, when I go under the water and I come up out of that water, I'm so invigorated. It's almost as if, all right, now we've accomplished the thing, on to the next day. And so, it's just really neat. I wish I could bottle up this feeling of what this is like. But I don't have to bottle it up. You've got the power within you to do this. There ain't nothing special about Jimmy Moore. Nope. Nothing special about me. You could do this just as easily as me. You just have to be willing to give it a go. And again, start in your shower. Start with cold showers. That's what I did three years ago. And now look, I've got, I've got ice all over me when I'm in an ice bath. You're rocking this challenge. Thank you for that. Carrie is here. Cheryl is here. For the love of ice baths is here. She's a lovely lady, by the way. You guys go need to go follow for F-O-R, the underscore the, underscore love, underscore of, underscore ice baths. She does the same thing and does it with such exuberance, you guys. You're going to really like her. So I invited her to come on my podcast when I get back to doing podcasts in June. So look for that. Real excited to interview her. Jeremy says, I love Mike Mutzel. He has the ice barrel as well. Yes, I um, I would like to get one of the ice barrels because there may be a day that I don't want to do 32 degrees and the ice barrel pretty much is like, it's just a bucket of ice basically. Fill it up with water and then you can put ice in there and it'll get to like the 40s if you get enough ice in there. So I do want to get an ice barrel on those days that I don't want to get totally Ninja Warrior 32 degrees. But I, I do love the 32 degrees. I can handle that quite well. As you see every day. Francis is here. Deanna's here. Vitacron. Jeremy says, could you change that response by changing your ice bath times? Again, Jeremy, these are questions I've answered in previous videos, but I'm so glad you're here and learning from me, brother. Um... I did try changing the time. One day I did my ice bath at 8 o'clock in the morning. And you're not going to believe this. I did my ice bath at 8 o'clock in the morning. And by about 2 o'clock I was so sleepy. I was so tired. Now mind you, 8 o'clock was just a few hours after I woke up. But I was so tired after doing that ice bath. My normal 5 minute ice bath in 32 degree water. That by 3.30 that afternoon, I had to go to sleep. 
And I thought it was going to be like a nap or whatever. And next thing I know, it was like 1030, 1045. Jimmy went to bed because it knocked me out. And so I have to be careful doing cold therapy outside of the afternoon times of that length. Um, I think I could probably microdose a minute or maybe two minutes if I did a morning session. Um, and I do that from time to time, by the way. Anytime I feel anxious, anytime I feel stressed, the first thing I think of is I need to go dip in the ice bath. Not for long, just one or two minutes. Get in there, dunk my head, get relaxed again, and basically reset my brain. That's what the ice bath does for me when I'm not feeling great mentally, which is rare. I feel pretty great almost all the time. But in those moments, I have this tool that will help me. And the way you could use that, by the way, is if you're having a stressful day at work and you don't have access, obviously, to an ice bath, just get in the bathroom. And if you could turn on the cold water and just pour cold water over your head, that would really be helpful for you to calm down. Little tip, trick of the trade here. I'm going to put that in my book that... There's so many little things you can do to just instantly change your mood, instantly change a bad day, a depressive state. And obviously, if you have some clinical depression or clinical anxiety, that's a different thing altogether. But if it's just your Joe Schmo stress-induced versions of those things, yeah, yeah, you can turn those around pretty easily with ice baths. Bulletproof says, Jimmy's always hot. Hey, convince a girl of that and I'll be in business. <sighs> Jacqueline's here. Miss Chantal. MSM is here. Keeping it real mom. Gabby is here. So yeah, thank you guys for being here on day 114 of my 365 day Jimmy Ice Bath Challenge. Still going at it, you guys. I am actually winding down my work week this week will be my last work week until the first week of June, first full week of June. So I'm taking off from all of my podcasts um, for the entire month of May, because as you guys know, I am working on a project, uh, a book project on cold therapy that I am tentatively calling cold therapy clarity. So I'm excited to get going on that. I have so much that I've learned just from my experience Plus all the research that I've been looking at. I'm excited to put it in book form. And those of you that have read my books, Keto Clarity, Cholesterol Clarity, this book's going to be very familiar to you as far as the format goes. Um, I'm also reaching out to a few people to be experts in the book. So stay tuned for that. I mean, my, my big get would be if somehow, some way, I could get Wim Hof to participate or Andrew Huberman to participate. I don't know if I can get those bigger names, but it's never stopped me before when I've written books going for big names. So wish me luck on that. I'm also writing a new book, a follow-up book to the One Step Deeper Journal of the Foundations. Brittany Davis, my co-host on my podcast and my co-author on that book, uh, and I are writing a book on trauma. So One Step Deeper Journal for Trauma so I'll be using that time in May for that purpose as well. So busy, busy, busy with lots of projects. Jeremy says, thank you for the answers. I have clinical anxiety. I get hot flashes and the therapist said, dunk my face in ice when that happens. Yes. Yes. It sounds so weird, but it's true. You should. Now I stick my... I stick my head, an entire you know, head and everything under the water at the end. But I have seen these people in the ice baths. I've seen them just put their face forward into the ice. I haven't done that yet. Obviously, I'm getting that same experience when I dunk my head. But I bet I could hold it in the water a pretty long time. It's supposed to be really good for your skin too. But... Yeah, I agree with your therapist, but I would also say don't just limit it to just your face. If you're going to do this for anxiety, dunk that whole head and 
basically your vagus nerve is what you want to get cold. And so if you could somehow cup your hands and put that water all over your head, the face, your head, I think you're gonna get more benefits than just dipping your face in the cold water, but she's definitely got you on the right track, it sounds like. Perfume and Style Addict is here. Lucy's here. So yeah, you guys, still going at this ice bath thing. Those of you who came in late, there is my beautiful Morozco Forge. If you've never seen this before, lots and lots of ice. It's got, see this, is a big old chunk that was in there today that I didn't even break up. Look at that. So, that was heavy on top of me today, so. Uh, the things I do for ice baths. Or as my new friend would say, for the love of ice baths. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. All right, guys. If you don't have any other questions or comments, I'm going to pop off here for now. Go enjoy the rest of your weekend. As always, if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, or even here on Instagram, go follow me over there at Living Low Carb Man, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. And we would love to have you join in live 5 p.m. Eastern time every day here in the year 2022. I will tell you before I get out of here, uh, I'm not going on that trip to uh, Texas that I was planning on for this week. Um, and so in lieu of that, I am thinking of doing a trip to the mountains, either Gatlinburg, Smoky Mountains, or Cherokee, North Carolina Mountains. Um, so I'll still have a trip coming soon, hopefully, I'm trying to figure out the details and work out the rest of the details, but to show you what it's like to do an ice bath when you're on the road. So I do still want to show you guys that. So stay tuned. Jacqueline says, thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you all for always being here, always supporting me. It's a great help to know that these videos are helping encourage you. And look, if you haven't even tried any cold therapy at all, just give it a try. Just see how you do. What's the worst that can happen? You're not going to die. You're not going to be harmed. You just got to be willing to push past all that craziness that happens in your head when you first get into cold. Use your breath, slow down your breath to slow down your heart rate, to calm all those nerves and all those thoughts in your head and watch how surprised you'll be at how good you feel. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back again real soon. Bye, guys.